So I'm going to be spitting in this cup all day. I'm even gonna take it to work with me and spit in the cup there. And I'm going to collect as much saliva as I possibly can. So the only data point that NASA has on humans in a vacuum is in 1966, there was a spacesuit technician who was testing a spacesuit in a giant vacuum chamber and suddenly his spacesuit gave out and so he was exposed to the vacuum. So he ended up surviving it. He was exposed for about 30 seconds, but he recalled afterwards, he said, as I stumbled backwards, I could feel the saliva on my tongue starting to bubble just before I went unconscious. And that's the last thing I remember. So let's test if that really happened. Would saliva actually boil in the vacuum chamber? So in order to do this test, I'm going to be testing my own saliva in the vacuum chamber. So I'm going to be measuring how much spit I can produce in one day, but I'm also going to be measuring how much my salivation increases when I smell food. I've always wondered that. You know that your mouth waters when you smell food, but how much does the salivation, how much extra saliva does it actually produce when you smell food? So I'm gonna measure that on my own body. So I'm gonna try turkey, and then I'm gonna try vinegar, because I've heard vinegar actually makes your mouth water more. And then once I've collected all the saliva, we'll put it in the vacuum chamber and see if it actually boils under vacuum. Okay, it's 7 a.m., here's my first spit of the day. Okay, I just got done with work. I've been carrying around my spit cup everywhere. <laughs> now we'll keep it going. Okay, here's five minutes of salivating with no food. Okay, looks like we got 1.862 grams in five minutes. Okay, now we're gonna try it with smelling food. So what I have here is apple cider vinegar. I've heard that this really increases salivation. And whenever I've eaten vinegar, I've noticed that my mouth waters a lot. So let's try vinegar. Okay, five minutes starting now. Whoa, I'm already up to 0.6. I'm only a minute in and I'm almost up to what I got before. So I already surpassed it. I'm only, I'm not even halfway yet. I keep moving it away from me for a little bit because it, I'm starting to get used to the smell. All right, wow, six grams in five minutes. <laughs> That's way more than when I wasn't smelling the vinegar. So I got 6.072 grams in five minutes. Okay, now I'm going with some turkey breast. Let's see if this makes me salivate more than vinegar. Five minutes starting now. Okay, three grams, 3.091 grams. So definitely not as much as the vinegar. <laughs> I'm really surprised at how much the vinegar made me salivate. I wasn't even eating it, just smelling it, and it just made my mouth just water. <laughs> That's crazy. I wonder if it's the same for other people, because I like vinegar. I put it on my salads and stuff, and I wonder if people that don't like vinegar still salivate. So the reason I was doing weight is because Saliva, when you spit it out, has a lot of bubbles in it. It gets really foamy. And so it's hard to measure the exact volume of it. 
So if I just measure the weight, then I can tell you exactly how much saliva I have. But I have to know the density of it. So human saliva is about 98% water. So it should be very close to water. But that other 2%, I'm not sure exactly the density of it. And so I'm not sure exactly how much it should weigh. So this will tell me what the density of my spit is. So I'm going to get five milliliters of my own saliva in here. So the empty syringe, I've now teared it so it's zeroed out. Okay, and then with five milliliters on it, so that's almost exactly the density of water, a little bit denser. So this is 5.04 grams per five milliliters or 1.01 grams per milliliter. Okay, now to see how much saliva I actually collected today. So here we go. <laughs> That's pure spit. <laughs> okay, we got 86 grams, which equates to around 86 milliliters. So I collected this 86 milliliters in about eight hours worth of time. So realistically, this is about how much saliva I could pull together in a day. But if I go by my maximum rate of saliva production, it was about 1.8 grams per five minutes. So that's about 1.8 milliliters per five minutes. And that means throughout the day, minus your sleeping hours, because you don't really produce saliva while you sleep. By my calculation, you could generate around 345 milliliters. So I could easily fill this up and more. If you had turkey breasts in front of you all day and you didn't become accustomed to the smell, then you could generate around a half a liter of spit throughout the day. But if you had vinegar in front of your nose and you didn't become accustomed to it, you could generate 1.1 liters. So you could easily fill up a bottle this size just in around 16 hours of daytime. But for now, this is what I could muster up. So let's see what human spit does in the vacuum chamber. Okay, so to make this the most realistic, I've been keeping this at around body temperature. So it's at 97 degrees Fahrenheit right now, 36 degrees Celsius. So this will give us the most realistic idea of what would actually happen to the spit in your mouth in a vacuum or in space. Okay, testing what happens to human saliva in a vacuum chamber. Three, two, one. <laughs> Okay, we're at 0.6 atmospheres. Okay, less than half an atmosphere right now. We're at 0.2 atmospheres. So right about now, we should start to see the dissolved air that was in, that was in the saliva or in the spit start to dissolve out of solution. Okay, we're at 0.1 atmospheres. So you can see little bubbles forming in the top. Oh, looks like it's already starting to boil. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that easily boiled. <laughs> there goes the spit. So we're not even all the way down to full vacuum. We're around at 0.05 atmospheres right now and it's already boiling. So definitely human saliva does boil in a vacuum. I guess I'll believe the 1966 vacuum spacesuit technician. Well, it looks like soap bubbles. <laughs> Oh, it's fogging up the whole chamber. Okay, let's go ahead and stop the vacuum. Let the air back in. See, we're at a pretty good vacuum there now. Okay, let's let the air back in. Three, two, one. Ew. It's pretty 
pretty gross. But there you go. Only around 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius. So we lost a lot of heat due to boiling, basically because the energetic molecules that were in the spit flew off into the vapor, and so it cooled down the spit. So whenever I show liquids boiling in the vacuum chamber, I always get a lot of people saying it wasn't really boiling, that was just the dissolved air coming out of the liquid. And it is true that when you expose it to low pressures, the liquid will release the dissolved air that was in it. But the way you can tell the difference between boiling and dissolved air is the dissolved air will stop fairly quickly because there's not a lot of dissolved air in water. But the boiling doesn't end. The boiling will just continue until all the water has vaporized. Or in a vacuum, it will continue all the way down to the freezing point of the water. It's just like when you boil water on your stove. So when you first turn it on, before it even gets to boiling point, you see bubbles start to form at the bottom. And that's the dissolved air coming out of the water. But then as it heats up even more all the way to the boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius of the water, then the water actually starts boiling and that's a continual boil. It's not just a few bubbles that form and rise to the top. So there you have it, saliva in a vacuum chamber. Actually out of this whole experiment, I think I'm most surprised by how much vinegar made my mouth water. So the vinegar increased my saliva production by three times the normal amount. That's pretty amazing. So it's definitely not in your head when you smell food and you get hungry and you say your mouth is watering. So it was actually really hard to produce all of this spit. My jaw even got tired throughout the day just squeezing my lips together to spit out the spit. So definitely the values that you see on Wikipedia of 1.4 liters in a day that's a high value, and I don't even think you'd be able to produce that much. I got a maximum production smelling vinegar 1.1 liters in 16 hours because I'm leaving eight hours for sleep. But even then, it would be really hard to spit out that much throughout the day because I got tired just doing this amount. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And leave me any questions or comments you have in the comments section, and I'll try to get to them. And also leave me any suggestions. I get a lot of good ideas from you. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.